Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Bakel Show where we help people with chronic health conditions, chronic health issues. And today I want to go over an interesting topic uh, that relates to how the bacteria in your gut have an effect on your weight. So kind of an interesting topic because we don't really think about it that way. We don't really think, hey, um, you know, my gut bacteria affects my weight. How does that occur? And, you know, if you have a weight issue, if you are overweight, then this can definitely be a, a factor here that can start early in life or certain times in life. Um, what we're seeing now in the research is the gut bacteria. I mean, we're, we're seeing more and more and more research come out on gut bacteria and its effect on our overall health. Um, the interesting thing is the, um, the gut is about 70 to 75 percent of our immune system. In fact, the gut has its second only to the brain in nervous system tissue. I mean, pretty important area in our gut and these bacteria that live there play such a big part in kind of who we are and um, they affect us on a genetic level. They affect us on our ability to make certain vitamins. They affect just our ability to digest. We have just so many, our neurotransmitters, so many things that these gut bacteria affect. You know, we think of bacteria as this bad thing. No, we have to have it. We need it. This is why, you know, living in a world where it's, you know, the germ theory and thinking that everything needs to be, you know, um, antiseptic for everything, you know, no, not, not good. The research totally is against that. So um, kind of interesting here because some, some studies that I just kind of pulled up, actually, these are only a few and yeah, these were just kind of interesting because there's just so much out there that we could, we could go over, but we're kind of limited by time. Now this is interesting because it's kind of, how could it start? How could we start having gut bacteria issues even early in life? And what they did is they took a bunch of mice and they gave them antibiotics really early in life. And what they found is this really messed up their bacteria in their gut and caused them to be overweight later in life, or even as they, move through life. So again, starting off with antibiotics right from the beginning of life already can start this uh, problem. And then another thing that was kind of interesting is they took some more mice. They took gut bacteria out of one, mi of, of, of one mouse that was obese and they transferred that bacteria into a lean um, normal looking mouse that did not have weight issues. And um, the when they transplanted that gut bacteria, the lean mouse turned into an obese mouse. So very interesting. How does that occur? You know, this is our gut bacteria and how much it plays a part. And then we're even seeing, you know, more recent studies. They're saying gut bacteria, your gut microbiota, microbiome is another word, these bacteria that live in the gut, this is the environment, this, this um, big uh, colony in our gut that houses all of these different bacteria. Again, these gut bacteria are related to obesity, obesity and insulin resistance. Insulin resistance also called prediabetes. So we're seeing that. And then there's another one. They're saying, hey, this is, uh, um, is there a relationship uh, between gut bacteria and obesity because we're seeing a lot of it. And this was, of course, even out of like Mayo Clinic. So, you know, you're, you're seeing uh, just more and more information pointing to how this occurs, but we need to get into the details of why and how this occurs. Because, you know, you can look at these papers and think, yeah, okay, uh, changing my gut mm, causes this. Why? Why does that happen? Very important that you kind of look at it and know the why. So let's Let's talk about some things here. Okay, so here we go. We've got the altered gut bacteria microbiome. So if you alter that, one thing that can really start to happen here, because the gut, remember, is part of uh, inflammation, I mean, excuse me, our immune system. So immediately we're gonna start to get inflammation. And what's one thing that inflammation will immediately start to do in our body at a cellular level? 
it decreases our metabolism. So instantly when you're inflamed in the body, metabolism drops. When these bad bacteria are in there are altered bacteria or other bad guys living in your gut, funguses, parasites, things like that that aren't supposed to be there, inflammation, it starts a fire in the house. All right. And then another, and then of course, what happens then we get ah, weight gain. Okay. So another factor that can occur is when we have an altered gut microbiome, we actually um, promote the production of fat. So we get what's called lipogenesis. We start to create production of fat and we increase um, uh, release of stored sugars. Let's call it that. Stored sugars and that's called gluconeogenesis for all of you uh, nerds out there. All right. So, and what happens then? Uh, I don't know why that likes to pop up. Weight gain. Okay. Yeah, we're starting to see some pictures here, some problems. Okay, now what's another thing that occurs when we get altered gut uh, bacteria? We hear this often. Uh, doctors talk about this a lot and you hear, hear these kind of uh, words more and more, we get leaky gut, what they call increased intestinal permeability. That's the technical word. The gut becomes leaky. So if the gut becomes leaky, yeah, what's, what's even going to happen more there? We get more inflammation. In fact, that'll increase, we won't really talk about these, but it'll increase what are called lipopolysaccharides, which are also inflammatory agents that'll get in through foods getting in where they aren't supposed to, things like that. And of course, what does that do? Leaky gut does a couple of things. Now, this is one side of it. This is going to, these two things, increase inflammation, increase these lipopolysaccharides, we get decreased metabolism. And when we get decreased metabolism, what happens? Weight gain. All right. Now, another thing that leaky gut also uh, will do, because when you have a leaky gut, you absorb, let's put it this way. If your gut's swollen and inflamed, those sugars and carbs are going to go right through those tiny molecules that go right through. The gut isn't really holding things back, um, the good foods won't absorb as well. Um, and the defenses go down, the gut's inflamed. But if you're mainly absorbing these sugars and carbs, what starts to happen is we get increased insulin resistance. Now, didn't this, that's the same thing that paper said, that research paper. Increased insulin resistance, increased chances of pre-diabetes. So not good there either. All right. And then another thing that will happen then is if we get that increased insulin resistance and this leaky gut, we're going to get increased triglyceride production. And what's a triglyceride? So a triglyceride, you know, oftentimes if you look at blood work, they will group triglycerides with uh, cholesterol. You'll see your chart in the article, oh yeah, your triglycerides are high, your cholesterol is high. You know, these are all cholesterol. No, triglycerides are not tri cholesterol. They're not. Triglycerides are the stored form of blood sugar. So if you eat something, your body's going to take a portion of that and store it for later. 
sometime when you need it, let's say you go through a famine, you need those triglycerides. So um, that's the stored form of blood sugar. So high triglycerides are usually due to blood sugar issues. This is why when people have um, uh, blood sugar, diabetes, pre-diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, their triglycerides go up, they start to gain weight. So again, we get this increased triglyceride production. And then um, what does that do again? Uh, yeah, I guess. Weight gain. Okay. And then another thing that occurs with um, this gut bacteria being off, and that is um, we get decreased muscle fatty acid um, oxidation. Oops. Thanks. Oxidation is that end word, even though it's kind of messy there. So um, oxidation, we, we want to break down these fatty acids into things that we can use into energy for our muscles, for our body. And if we have a leaky gut, and what goes along with it is we get decreased um, fatty acid oxidation in our muscles. And so we start to get, um, again, weight gain. All right. And then another thing um, that can occur, this is really probably our last thing that, that kind of goes into this. So if, you're, if your gut's inflamed, oops. If your gut's inflamed, what else gets inflamed easily? What things are connected? Your gut and your brain, heavily connected. So gut inflammation equals brain inflammation. If your brain gets inflamed, one area in particular gets affected, and that is your hypothalamus. So if your hypothalamus gets affected, um, what things does it do? It actually is your appetite center of your body. So what happens is you can get, you lose, let's put it this way, you lose appetite suppression. Another thing is, is this can affect, the hypothalamus is also our temperature regulating area. So you lose thermogenic effects. Um, so if we, if our appetite is not as regulated, yeah, we're hungry more often. I need some, I need something. I need something. Give me some snacks. If we lose these thermogenic effects, our body temperature drops. What happens? Our metabolism slows down weight gain. So hypothalamus, we get decreased thermogenesis, decreased heat production, which occurs, I know when we eat something, it burns, it turns into fuel. When it burns, cellular metabolism, that makes heat. Just like when you have the, you know, you put gas in your car, you start your engine, as your car burns the fuel, that produces heat, the engine gets hot. All right. And then uh, increase, let's, let's put it as increased appetite. All right, so this is how all of this can occur. This is how we can really start to get, again, weight gain from all of this, or we could say even inability to lose weight. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so uh, very interesting. So, you know, what can you do about this? I mean, you don't want to do a transplant like those mice. And does it work the other way? If you transplant bacteria from someone who maybe is really low weight to someone who's heavyweight, does that change that? We don't really know. Um, in fact, it, it might not. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, it seems to be the worst things are always easy. Uh, it's like it's easier to grow weeds than grass. You know, I, I'm, I'm sorry to get off on my little tangent example there. But uh, the thing is, is, is really what you've got to do is you've got to change your diet, number one. 
if you've got a bad diet, if you eat a lot of processed foods, if you eat a lot of sugars and carbs and, um, you know, you, you drink pop or, uh, you know, the, all these things have detrimental effects that actually alters your gut bacteria. And those gut bacteria actually cause you to crave more of those things. So there's this psychological side that's being promoted by a lot of this too. It's like, hey, my gut bacteria, they really love um, pizza and um, um, candy and all these things. And so I'm going to just eat more of that. But if you start eating differently, if you change your health picture, your bacteria will actually change. And as those bacteria change, that can help. Also, as you change your diet, you know, sometimes probiotics can play. You know, you're trying to bring in those good bacteria to help alter that gut bacteria, especially if those bacteria have been destroyed by inflammation, by other bad guys in the gut, by antibiotics and things like that. Um, also, even I would say even higher than that, is um, there's destructive things that can hang out in the gut that can uh, affect those gut bacteria and things that, that compromise the immune system in the gut. And those can be heavy metals, chemicals, other infectious agents, especially these bad bacteria, these um, funguses like candida, these parasites that you know you see weird things about, but they're actually extremely common. Um, and the thing is, is if that, if all these bad guys are affecting your gut, this just leaves the door open. And actually a lot of times when it's that way, if there's a lot of bad things going on in your gut, you could try to change your diet all you want, but it isn't going to really help. In fact, if you say, hey, I'm going to take out all my sugars and carbs and you've got a really inflamed gut, you're actually going to start to get a lot of low blood sugar events and you're going to crave more sugars and carbs. And it's just going to be a worse scenario. You've got to kind of put the fire out in the house, put the fire in the gut out and get it to heal and repair and then put in the good uh, bacteria and, and help them to grow and do the right things. So there's really kind of a process and an order to this stuff. And again, if you, um, you know, you, you can try stuff, but, um, you know, if you do have more of a chronic health issue, an autoimmune type condition, then it's important that you do it correctly and that you um, deal with some of the underlying causative factors first. And that's really what we do is find those and deal with them. So I hope everybody got some great uh, information out of this and um, uh, definitely um, share this information. I think that's um, so crucial. Don't hesitate to share this with um, people that you know and um, people out. I think it's, it's just the information, it's, it's very helpful. And a lot of people have no idea um, they've never, I get so many patients in here that uh, they were like, gosh, nobody's ever told me that. I didn't realize that this affected this and this is how this worked. Nobody actually sat down with them and told them or they didn't really read it or knew that nobody pointed them to that information. So I think it's very important that you point people to great information that can help them in their health journey, especially if they have these chronic health issues. So, all right. Well, everybody have a wonderful day and God bless and I will see you soon.